Hey guys, what's up? I got everybody here from TMI. Don't forget to write us an email at TMIPodcast2018. That's TMIPodcast2018 at gmail.com. Let us know how we're doing. Also, check us out on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter at TMI underscore podcast 2018. Just use the numbers. Don't spell it out. Ooh, don't forget Facebook.com slash TMI podcast 2018. Follow us on the Apple podcast app. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a five star review. All you YouTubers out there, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, TMI Podcast 2018. Look for the popcorn bucket. That's right. Also, check us out on Spotify and the Google Play Music app for all you Android users. Follow us and subscribe everywhere. We appreciate it. We're doing it for you guys, the fans. Thank you. The moment our fellow geeks, dweebs, nerds, other unfortunates have been fervently waiting for has finally arrived. It's time for TMI Confessionals of the Nerd Confessionals Kind. Of the nerd Confessionals kind. of the Nerd Kind. And now, your hosts Dave Odinson Warhowski, Jeff. Nerf Herder Chandler, Jim Kaiju Baker, and Mike Mjolnir Evans. And now, let's get on with the show. Here is TMI. Welcome. Hey, we're back. Here episode we go. Episode 11. Of 11. Or Jim episode Jim. 2 of the Jeff 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 Show. Show. Yeah, we're starting anew. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Every week's and, an adventure with yeah, this group. Yeah. And of course, you know, everybody listening is, it's going to be three or four days after the fact, but happy Father's Day. Yes, happy Father's, Father's Day, Day to everyone out there. Happy Father's Day. I yep. um, hope you're having a good week. Uh, and I hope you're sticking in with us and listening. I I've gotten so. some feedback on our show. People seem to like us that, that actually listen. I, uh, we got, we got some good response last week from the, uh, Saturday morning cartoon. We're definitely going to have to revisit that. Um, because yeah, there, there's a fair amount of people, even on Facebook, people were throwing out cartoons. Wait, was this on Saturday? Was this on? So yes, there's a yeah. fair amount of cartoons that we never and even. And as you said, in. we should do a sep- a whole separate show on after school before yes, school correct. programming yep. as well, because a lot of the cartoons that I was getting, um, was exactly that was uh, it was actually technically after school stuff so it wasn't a part of our our saturday morning show for a reason but right but we'll get to you don't worry and okay. we, we might do a part two a second tier saturday morning oh we could go we could go part five <laughs> yeah so this episode speaking of cartoons even though this is you know that's that's a pretty primitive term for what pixar does these days yeah right. um we're doing the incredibles incredibles 2 this incredibles is our review too. of the incredibles So we've, and before we get into it, uh, obviously, like anything else that we talk about, if you haven't seen it and you want to see it, shut this off right now, go to one of our other episodes, listen to episode 10. You know, I I recommend it, the Saturday morning cartoon episode. So, so yes, and it's only Jeff and I, again, uh, as Jeff mentioned, uh, that it's the Jeff and Jim show today. (laughs) And I think we're probably the only ones of the team that saw Incredible, so it's probably (laughs) So okay, so so what did we think of of Incredibles? Uh, I will say that I enjoyed it immensely. Um, it is the only movie that I've seen recently, and I can't even recall where the audience cheered three times. Which I mean, I went to a packed house on Friday night, and you had your obligatory uh, families with their kids. They had blankets. Uh, there was a fair amount of kids who were in their mid-teens. So you think, what, this was 14 years in between the two movies? So these kids Mm kind of grew up with this. So it was kind of cool to see that as well, this this kind of mix of of people going to see this animated movie. I thought it was a little bizarre, the opening where you had the cast members basically apologizing that it's taken them 14 years to make this movie. Yes. And at the end of that, they cheered. The whole crowd, like, cheered, which I'm like, all right, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. and then they cheered again at the end of the mini movie, which we can get into that after the fact, because that was bizarre. Um, 
And then at the end, the end of the movie, they, they cheered again. And I don't remember anybody cheering in a movie since Return of the Jedi. I saw it at the drive-in and that little introduction that um, where Craig T. Nelson and Holly Hunter and Samuel Jackson, yeah. you know, as you said, came out and, you know, it's been a long wait. It's been 14 years. And in the drive-in, I could hear people, you know, cheering. It's oh, really? From yeah. their cars. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this so, family, I mean, this, this movie is well beloved. This is, you know. Like I said, uh, you and I were just talking before we get, came on the air that, you know, this is a, one of the few movies that my wife actually would love to have seen in the theater. She just absolutely hates the theater experience. Yeah. So um, I understand. You know. I completely understand that. Even at the drive in, you get encroached upon by <laughs> the cars coming in close to you. Just the the, the, the chatter, the, the the lights from the cell phones. And yeah, right. The, there, there's no there's no etiquette whatsoever anymore. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I enjoyed the little kids screaming at the screen. I mean, that's part of the experience because it was a kid movie, you know, but yeah, the mom next to me checking her phone every 10 minutes, the dad in front of me who had the daughter on his lap and proceeded to get up and down 10 times during the movie, thus blocking me. So uh, yeah. that was, uh, it is what it is. It, it's, it, it doesn't, I, I try not to let it take away from my experience. So yeah, I mean, I like this movie. We can get into it. I am assuming you liked it as well. Yes, I would say um, I was kind of thinking it was along the same vein as Force Awakens, comparing that to Star Wars, because it hit all the beats of the original it Incredibles. Did indeed. Because it kind of switched um, the roles of uh, Elastigirl going out and uh, having her own car- superhero career while, while the husband Mom stayed in this time, where it was, yep. you know, it was switched around in the first movie. So I thought that was nice. I thought it was on par. You like oh, pun with intended. The first, with the first movie? Uh, I thought it fell a little short of the first movie, only because, well, again, so, so I think, right, the dynamic of, you know, switching out, you know, where dad stays home. I mean, I stayed home for the first year and a half of my daughter, and now I have teenagers. So I actually enjoyed that part of the movie immensely. And I think that that, you know, Brad Bird always said, I'm not going to make a second one until I have the perfect script. And I feel that he really, they really dug deep and went out of their way to create the, the family angst and, you know, what's really going on or what's, you know, how these kids and the family members as a whole are dealing with the fact that they're supers, but they have to stay hidden. The villain aspect of it, I thought was lazy. And I think part of that has to do with Syndrome is such a great villain that they just, there's no way that you could top that. Right. And, and on top of that, voiced by Jason Lee in the first one. Who Correct. Just did right. an over the top performance as Syndrome, like right. one of the most memorable villains ever, I think. Yeah. I mean, but he was well established. He had, he had a motive. This yeah. villain, I still don't understand her motive. Um, you know, Screen Slayer, it's, it's a great visual. And there's a fight sequence with Elastigirl and, and Screen Slayer in like this techno cage. Right, with a, with I mean, it was like phenomenal. Crashing, I mean, yeah, visually, yeah. it was just off the wall. It was so vibrant. You know, you got 14 years where the animation is just stepped up mm-hmm. and everything, the, the, the detail and all that, you know, I mean, Dash now with the, with the freckles. But I almost think that kind of worked against them too because you've already established these characters in the way they look. And you look at, you know, the design of Bob and Mr. Incredible and they're very cartoonish. And yet, all the other people in this movie, the secondary characters are, are much more realistic. Right. And it was, I, it, 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 it kind of took me out a little bit. It, it was a little weird. Yeah. So, and it was, they, they were, the, uh, they were very caricature, like the Incredibles themselves, especially the, you know, Mr. Incredible, as you say, with the, you know, the giant jaw and, and just the hugeness of them. And was yeah. it me or was Elastigirl looking a bit more ample in this? In hippie? This- hippie? She, I, I did come home and tell my wife she, immediately that she's going to, I'm going to buy her an Elastigirl costume. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So we've got Bob, Helen, Violet, Dash, and Jack-Jack. You know, yeah. this, this is the family of, and my favorite character still, carrying over from the first one, I think is Violet. I think that it's she, Violet. yeah, we'll yeah. See. She kind of steals the show from me. How about you? Who was your um, I really, I really loved the, like I said, the, the, the whole dad out of sorts dealing with you know the kid you know whether it's the the math homework or it's the you know jack jack only because i kind of had that experience and i loved that part of it but jack jack steals this movie i mean jack jack just absolutely such a great character and it's just the fact i guess you know because you saw that even like on the disc when the movie came out the first one and you had you know you saw his superpowers in action in the babysitter but you don't realize that they're all unaware that he has super abilities. 
So yeah, you know, as that the movie me. progresses, that's they well, all yeah. kind of learn what's going on with this character. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even the little fight sequence with him and the raccoon, which, which kind of borders on a Tom and Jerry uh, just out there, you know, but it was <laughs> yeah. so much fun. It was just a lot of fun to watch. I did rack my brain three quarters of the movie. Well, the whole movie, actually, I had to sit through the credits because Winston Dever who is not the bad guy, but he is, he's the billionaire that kind of steps up and helps them relocate, puts them in a house and brings Elastigirl out into the world. And he wants to reintroduce supers. He wants to bring them back and make them, you know, acceptable again. And his voice was just absolutely driving me nuts. I could not place the actor who played him. Bob Odenkirk. Yeah, it is from uh, Better Call Saul and uh, right, yeah, Dad, yeah. But he's got such a unique and individual voice. But I just, for the life of me, couldn't place it, and it was taking me out of the movie a little bit because I was like, "Who okay. is this guy?" Okay. Right. And I think you know, Ben even said that he he plays uh, the boss of Marshall on How I Met Your Mother. And oh, I really? Need to, okay. I need to look that up to see if that is the yeah, case. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. He's pretty. Uh, he's pretty spot on with some so, of that. And stuff. I thought they kind of, you know. With the with the siblings there, it wasn't the uh, typical uh, bad guy setup because you knew actually when in the beginning of the movie it was telegraphed because as I said before, it kind of follows the same beats as the first one. So you kind of yeah. assumed that they were going to turn out to be the villains. And Correct. Yeah. Like, almost like, yeah, right. That Winston was somehow, you know, go back to Unbreakable where, you know, Sam Jackson's character was 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 manufacturing these these incidents in order to bring the super, you know, it's yeah. almost like, you know, force. And I still didn't get a sense of what her true purpose was, why she was doing it. The, 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 the supers were already in hiding. They were already, they were already shunned by society. They were, they were, you know, illegal. And yet she felt the need to like help her brother bring them out just to put them back down. It didn't really make sense to me. Yeah. And again, it goes, it goes bad. Although I will say that there was a, a split moment where, where uh, Winston's character brings them to the, the hideout house, which is this millionaire, gorgeous mansion, every villain's. It, it was very reminiscent of Syndrome's uh, Hidden Lair. And as opposed to a lava flow opening up, he had water flow. And I'm like, oh, are we going to go down the road that somehow this is like, you know, the bad guy is Syndrome's sibling or something. But we never mentioned syndrome at all we mentioned the fact that their house has been destroyed by the flaming car you know this movie picks up exactly where the first one left off you know so but yeah no the syndrome thing was just kind of left by the wayside it never came up and the winston dever was it was bugging me it was you were getting bugged by the voice but just the physical appearance of winston dever was like i've seen this before and uh you know this character you know is this character I, from another go ahead i'm gonna uh, go ahead and then it then it struck me afterwards when i got home it's like big hero six uh the, the facial the, the facial features of the character winston dever is like the guy um Kratek, the the uh, alistair cray okay um, performed by um alan tudyk in big hero oh, six yes so you know the same you know very sharp nose um kind of features to it and that's what was bugging me so so i think there's a lot of similarity between the two characters physically. i will i will see that and uh i also saw a lot of similarities between that and uh stephen colbert's character in monsters versus aliens where he okay. plays the president yes kind of the yes, same yes you're right yeah. <laughs> i didn't even think of that yeah um, which is a DreamWorks. It's not even Pixar. Right. So I think, yeah, I think it was a, a worthy, worthy film. The, the, it was funny. As I said, it hit all the beats of the first one, which is not a bad thing. Yep. And I love the opening, what they did with the, the Disney logo in the beginning. Oh, yes, where yeah. they made it the yeah, Incredibles which is, which logo. Which is fun, know? right. Yeah. Yep. So they, they take the Disney castle and they make it um, the entire regular Disney opening that you're used to seeing. And they made it like that Incredibles retro red, yellow, black style. Yeah, which is funny because so cool. in this one, I didn't pick up, I guess the, I haven't watched the first one in a while, but there's there's this true like kind of 60s style aesthetics to all, whether it's the cars or the the uh, appliances in their house or the way the houses are designed. So I don't know if they're trying to just kind of make it timeless or if it's just uh, they're kind of harking. I mean, you know, the whole women's movement thing, obviously bringing Helen out, you know, harkens back to the sixties kind of, you know, women's rights movement and all that stuff. So I don't know how much of that played into it, but um, I, I caught more of it this time, this whole sixties kind of style 
of the surrounding, you know, the set designs and all that stuff. And it's, uh, and I just loved watching it because I had the feeling that everybody that was involved was having a blast, which you got from that little intro that they gave. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah. They were happy to be employed again. Yeah. Yeah. Especially Craig T. Nelson. What's yeah. That? Yeah. He's been waiting for this. <laughs> He's been waiting. Okay. So that that's a special problem. feature of today's episode. My, you may have heard him breathing through his mouth right, right next to the <laughs> microphone in the past 10 minutes since he has a bit of a cold. But um, my son Harrison is joining us here um, and he's going to I'm going to ask him to step up to the mic because he actually saw The Incredibles along with me. And he is the demo, the target demographic of the film. There you go. Hey, Welcome, Harrison. Harrison. Say, say hello. Hi. <laughs> what's going on, buddy? Come on. Come on. You know, the, the <laughs> you don't know what's going on. How did you like the movie? I liked it pretty much. Yeah. Did you like it better than the first one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. That's high praise. And who was your favorite character? Jack Jack. There you go. Jack Jack. And what is your favorite sequence in the movie? When he fought the raccoon. Yes. Of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that was actually... Yeah, that I kept waiting was... for the raccoon to make a reappearance, but he didn't. Right, right. And that scene just kept going and going Yes, and going. correct. It was, yeah. it was, you know, it made me think of if you've ever seen They Live with Rowdy oh, Roddy the Piper. the fight sequence that with Rowdy Roddy Piper. It never ends. Yeah. Yep. I love that. Yeah, or or any Family Guy where he fights the chicken that just goes on and on and on. So okay, so now Harrison was we were talking about this before, and he actually preferred Screen Slaver to, Ooh, okay. to Syndrome. And and why do you think that is? Why do you think you prefer Screen Slaver to Syndrome? Because he looks cool and stuff. <laughs> he sure did look cool. So yes, there was a thumbs up from from my buddy here for for Harrison. So nice. so great family movie. So if you know you shouldn't not be listening to this if you haven't seen it <laughs> right, if you haven't seen it but you know if you just can't get enough of us and you've got to listen to this stuff you know go see it you know and take the family don't be a, don't be afraid how should we say family friendly it is very family friendly mm-hmm. and there's a lot you know like the first one there's a lot more going on at the adult level that you know may go over some of the kids heads but uh it works across the board it is you know again i i, I feel it fell a little short of the original but that's not saying anything bad about it uh, and the music, you know, Michael uh, Gia, Giacchino, Gia, I mean, with with those horn trumpets and it's just, it's just very boisterous and it's very vibrant and it's, it's, you know, the fights, it, well, even the chase sequence where, where last the girl's chasing down the, uh, the motorcycle, the train right? yeah, she's the down motorcycle. the motorcycle. I mean, that was awesome. I mean, that you had to watch it like three times to catch all that stuff that's going on because it really was yeah. like, like just viscerally and fast paced. Yeah. Par for the course with our <laughs> movie, right? Cause you get, like stuff like Wally and things like that. You've got to really look at it with a microscope with, with a freeze frame because some of these some of these shots are just so beautiful and so intricate right that you have a feeling that there every frame has to have easter eggs in it you know just the, you know if the, if i was an animator or pixar that's what i would be doing i would be hiding stuff everywhere sure yeah. uh not only that but they always make it a point to kind of throw a little uh hidden message in there about the uh, next upcoming movie whether it's putting Nemo, you know, in in uh, Boo's bedroom and at the end of Monsters, that, was that here? Did you see anything? I did not because I don't know what their new. I don't know what the next movie is after this. Yeah, so no, I know I it's Cars know Twelve. That, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. again, another, that's all we need is another more. Cars. You know, <laughs> no more Incredibles, but more, more Cars. Like our, yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the 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 opening shot here, the uh, the short film that opens the Incredibles. Is it Bow? Is that how? Bow. Uh, I, I'm going to assume that that is yeah. the pronunciation. A living dumpling. That that. <laughs> it, it's it's a very yeah. I, I I mean I heard quite a few kids. I mean it, it elicited some laughs. Uh, but it's. To me, it was like the first 10 minutes of Up. I mean, it was very heart-wrenching. It was, it, it was. It was. Visually, visually, I guess the, the writer and the, the lead animator is Chinese. So tapping into their culture, uh, it is a husband and wife. And he shows up for like a minute and the mom's making dumplings or whatever. And then all of a sudden she goes to bite one and it cries and it's a baby. And so then she treats this thing like a baby. And next thing you know, you see it like through its 10 years of life, 20 years of life. She's taking it out to the park. It's, you know, and as he gets older, uh, he becomes a little more indignant and he becomes a teen and he's closing his bedroom on her. And it, but it's all silent. There's like no dialogue whatsoever. Uh, and then he shows up, he comes home and he has a fiance and he's moving out and she's crying and, and a last ditch effort to keep her son home. She eats him. <laughs> it's just like, the audience just was like, what the f- 
<laughs> it was uh, it was much. And then you realize that he was a real kid all along. He shows up and he's an adult. Yeah, and, and looking up, just like the dumpling, the dumpling character. And they yeah. end up making dumplings together with the fiance. And it's yeah. just, I, I don't know. I truly don't know what to make of it. Yeah, and it's, you know, all these short movies that, before the Pixar things are just like Oscar fodder to me. Because you right, yeah. always like see them at the Academy Awards and they always win the best short film. But it was, this one was kind of out there and like in a good way because a lot of them are very schmaltzy. Like the... Um, the, what was the last one with the? I forget what the name of it was, but with the little bird on the on the beach. Oh, on the on the beach. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah, so, that was cute. Yeah, and then there was the one um, with the two volcanoes. Uh, was that before Inside Out? It was before Inside Out. Oh yeah. Um, with the two singing volcanoes. Which is a completely oh my gosh! I never saw that movie in the theater, and and it kind of came. I think it showed up on HBO or something. I finally sat down to watch it and was blown away by oh, it. Oh yeah, Inside Out is probably oh, one of my favorite movies. Period. Crazy. Yep. Yeah. But again, Pixar does this phenomenal job of downplaying, you know, the premieres of their movies or when they do the trailers, like they don't give anything away. You never truly know what what the movie's about, what the context is. You, you, you know, you, you get these little bits and pieces and maybe you see one of the main characters, maybe you even don't. You know, they give you a little piece of the world, but that's like it. So, yeah, so, so kudos. So before we move on to our next subject, um, thumbs up to Incredibles. And Harrison was, is he's kind of poking me because he wanted to, Jack Jack is his favorite character, right? Can I assume that? Yes. And so as we know, Jack Jack, anybody that's seen the movie, Jack Jack has like, you know, 10 plus powers that, powers that he reveals throughout the film. So Harrison has very strong feelings about what his favorite Jack Jack power is that, he, that unleashed upon the raccoon during that, during that epic scene. So let's, let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you like he, like when he duplicates, like when he like turns into more than one. When he multiplies. Yes. That is, that is a pretty crazy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He had quite the arsenal of superpowers at his disposal. Yeah. And then when you get him mad, he would just turn in like, like this is a little beast. Which, which well, so Edna Mode, which was great, bringing her back in. Uh, and she creates a super suit for him to kind of control Jack Jack's abilities. Does anybody ever call her Dame Edna in the, in the <laughs> I movies? Because I want to refer to her as Dame Edna, but I know that that's you Edna know. Mode. That's uh, Brad Bird, by the way, who does her voice. Yes, yes, I did know that. I yeah. did know that. So, yeah. um, Incredibles, so, decent. Four and a half popcorn, popcorn buckets. Yes. I would give it um, probably three and a half popcorn. Three and, buckets and a half. Me. Three and a half, yes. Okay. So thank you, Harrison, for joining us for the Incredibles. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Stick around because once we do the confessional question, I want you to come back for that. There you go. That, yes, we need yeah, your input yeah. on that one. So I'll, I'll call you. So. <laughs> yeah. we, didn't, we didn't even mention all the other supers because at the end of this, obviously, you know, superheroes are now reinstated. Um, but there is an arsenal of, of uh, supers that were brought in and they all have kind of different abilities. And that was kind of fun just to see, you know, that world expand a little bit beyond, beyond the ones that syndrome killed off in the first right, one, right, right. <laughs> which is pretty heavy handed, but yeah. So we'll see. I mean, do they move forward? Do they make a third? Do we just leave it well enough alone? I mean, it took long enough for this. We don't need another 14 years. I mean, it's not just a parent story, you know, um, Violet has a lot, you know, her storyline really drives a lot of this. Right. Yeah. The, uh, the whole subplot of her, the, the boyfriend. Right. Having his mind erased. Yeah. Yep. By uh, Ricker, Richter, Rick, Rick. Yeah. The, uh, the government, like kind of um, like, what did, what did Mulder used to call his, his contact in, in the X-Files? Oh, uh, deep, deep throat. throat. Right. Yeah. Deep so throat. Right. The, yeah, um, the, and that, that, the guy who does the voice, Bud Lucky just passed away. They did give the movie in his honor and he's done a fair amount of voice work over the years. So, so yes, um, highly recommended. Go see Incredibles 2. Yeah. And oh, yeah. as promised last week, our classic feature this time around. Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon. Yeah, the 1980 version of Flash Gordon. The only version. I think unless you go back to like unless the 30s with Buster Crab. Buster Crab, yeah. Right. <laughs> Which are not, I mean, those, I mean, those actually you know, by and large in, informed Lucas, you know, in what he did with star Wars. I think his, his original intent was he wanted the flash Gordon franchise and King features wouldn't give it up to him or he couldn't afford it. Really? But yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so he went on his own and said, you know what? I'll just make my own thing. Then. And Buster crab that, oh, that name always like makes me think of a venereal disease. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
use a cream for that. Yeah, yeah you cross between Buster Blood Vessel and you know and perhaps you. the most unappealing name I've probably ever heard Red of. Hands, a movie. Buster Move. Yeah. So anyway, so Flash Gordon released at the tail end of 1980, kind and of. It's, you know, yeah, it it is very much a, a, a late 70s. Yeah, so cresting that 70s wave, it is, yeah. is is Flash, and it was you know for kids back then. I saw Flash Gordon probably twice in the movie theater. That uh, kids that were so excited over Star Wars, Superman, Empire Strikes Back, they were primed for this, which is, was pretty much the first. I don't want to say new franchise because you know it existed for so many years beforehand, but new to kids anyway for in that time period because kids kids back then only knew of it like from the from the deep dark age. Right. Yeah. Your dad's uh, you know. Yeah. Comic Super, book Superman. You had you know. Um, in, in comic books, but Flash Gordon, you didn't. So it was kind of new to us. So that was, no. that was, and I think the only reason it got greenlit was because everyone was just chasing after Star Wars. Yeah. But and, I, they, uh, of course, they, Dino De Laurentiis would, would green well, it, greenlit yeah, anything. Is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess he's not the king of schlock, but he is attached to some, I wouldn't say cheesy movies, but what, King Kong from yeah. 78? Well, King Kong is one of my favorites. So I, I, listen, I can't, you can't go I wrong can't with that movie. King Kong, yeah. No, but he's, you know, balls enough to make a movie like that to, to, to take yeah. the, the, the 30s and to, you know, bring it, bring it up. Uh, Orca, which came right on the heels. Orca. Oh, Richard and Harris. Wasn't he, what was he yeah, thinking? That was, well, mm-hmm. so, so let's talk about some of these guys who, uh, you know, you got Max, Max von Sydow and Topol, who are both very well established theater yes. actors show up in, in Flash Gordon. So, you know, I guess De Laurentiis had some clout. Yeah. No, uh, I was Barbarella actually, too. Did he do Barbarella? I think did he's De Laurentiis do Barbarella? It's I possible. think he's not, associated with it in some way, shape, oh, or form. Because um, I know the, the director of Flash Gordon, Mike Hodges, was a respected British director. And that's how they, <laughs> that's how they pulled in uh, Brian Blessed. And, that, you know, and, and Dal- uh, Timothy Dalton. Yeah, and Timothy Dalton yeah. and probably Max von Sydow, um, who went on oh, after God. this, who went on after this to star as the Brewmeister in um, Strange Brew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he was like, eh, hey, I'm going that way. Yeah, it was yeah. very, it was campy, but it was, I think it was, it was, intentionally campy the writer lorenzo semple jr was like a main writer on the batman tv show so the guy knew his camp and they embraced it wholeheartedly you know they they didn't just try and replicate what star wars did uh they did their own thing and the one thing i'll say which is really cool watching this again is you know so go right to the the original alex raymond comic book art in the opening sequence you know, they pull that stuff in, but this movie is just so vibrant and it's just so over the top. It, it is a cartoon come to life. And the one thing I love is that they didn't try to reinvent anything per se. I mean, a lot of the ships look very much in the same vein as what they look like in the thirties comic strips. Yeah. The fins and the, and the, you know, the, the, the big needle nose uh, antennas coming out the front. Um, you know, it, it's a, it's a technical <laughs> Wonderland, and I think it, it's a great movie to bookend with The Incredibles because The Incredibles too had that vibrant color action stuff going on. Obviously, you know, you're looking at Flash Gordon through a, a cheesy '80s lens. You still right. see the wires holding up the Hawkmen. Uh, there are some, uh, you know, why would the Hawkmen have a uh, motorized <laughs> hover scooter when they all can fly? Yeah. Uh, and Flash Gordon, for whatever reason, inexplicably. He continues to find tank tops with flash lightning bolts on them. Like he's got three different throughout this movie. Yeah. Yeah. He's, you know, he's, he's the king of self-promotion. Is, is flash. <laughs> he, is. he was a quarterback for the New York Jets. So yeah, with a movie like this, it's very hard to rip it apart because it kind of takes itself apart, you know, just, just in its existence. Because at the very beginning, where where Ming the Merciless is pressing the buttons that say earthquake, hot yes, hail. Yeah. Hot <laughs> hail, hot <laughs> hail. <laughs> Not just hail. Yeah, that's a main specialty is, is hot hail. hail. Yeah. Um, um, and yeah. Volcanic eruption. So and it just, you know, just, to, just to have a good time, apparently, to, to cause chaos on the earth. Yeah. And the scene where they're, Flash and Dale Arden are in the plane and Ming personally, like, you know, zaps the pilot oh, that, Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, exactly. And you see his little face in the cloud. He's like, ha, ha, ha. Like, yeah. I got that guy. Topal and Brian Blessed just chewing the scenery up in every single oh. scene that they're in. 
there was well, that. Well, Zirkoff is actually a jerk. I mean, he's yeah. not a good guy whatsoever. I know, and I he, forgot about Munson, his side, yeah. his, his assistant. Who gets run over who by gets run over. Yeah. <laughs> right. And the, just the dialogue is just so, um, like, uh, Zarkov, check the angular vector of the moon, you know, to right. Munson, all the, all the commands that he's given. <laughs> Yeah, and um, and I just remember for this there you know it was obviously a big HBO movie for me as well after yep, it. That's probably where I watched it. And seeing the um, the previews on HBO and 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 the, the the snippets that they would pull from the movie and they were mostly from from Hawkman Boltan. Gordon's alive. <laughs> right. Well, again, like you said, he just he's like. Ah! <laughs> I swear yeah. that Gerard Butler, in preparing for 300, watched <laughs> Brian Blessed's it. performance. It's like it's, it's, a, like, tooth, it's, it's a tooth, tooth like, performance. Yeah. He puts his uh, teeth into every line of dialogue that, that he's got. Ay, yeah. ay, ay. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, there's a lot of Italian actors in this, I noticed. Probably because of the De Laurentiis um, connection. The connection, yeah. But the princess. Uh, princess Aura? Aura? Yes. Aura. Yeah. I was oh, just looking just... at her because looking at her online to see if she was in anything else. And it's all, she's a long, long list of films, but they're all Italian films. Except for this. Except for this. This is the <laughs> only English film that she's ever made. Uh, fall short on her uh, resume. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's the top of the list. It, yeah. she and, was and, I mean, she was scantily clad through this whole thing. There was a lot of overly sexualized fetish stuff going on here. Yeah, the whole scene where, where Ming does the, the puts Dale Arden in the trance oh, in the very yes, beginning. Right. He's like the kind of scene. feeling her up from afar. I, I know from that camera's forced perspective of his hand like going right. over, yep. even though he's like 20 feet away from her. <laughs> yeah. And of course, yeah, let's, let's, let's um, not forget Sam Jones himself. Uh, he of the feathered hair and uh, <laughs> he can come very, out of a damn swamp and be dry and within yeah. minutes. But he's very appealing as, as oh, absolutely, as yeah. Movie. And he he and he plays it straight. He yeah. doesn't. I don't. I mean, we're all like you said, the Hawkman and and some of this other stuff is kind of over the top. But but yeah, no, he plays it straight on. And you know, he actually got nominated for a Razzie for this. Undeserving, really? undeservedly, yeah. Nomination, not not a win. I, I guess he did not win, which is probably a good thing. But he was nominated. Um, yeah, and I was, you know, and of course they set it up so Ming is, you know, obviously not dead at the end because he grabs the ring and he does a ho ho ho. Right. Well, the yeah, they, they were looking for sequel. Yeah. Oh, sure. They wanted the franchise out of this. Yeah. And I was sorry to see that it never happened because no, I think it actually yeah. did pretty bad in the states. I think yeah. it did better overseas. Like you said, it probably did better in Italy or yeah. wherever. You know what? I happen to have you know a classic feature would not be the same without me. <laughs> without Jim's crunching numbers. So 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 it cost twenty million dollars to make. That's it's like Flash peanuts. Yes, and it only made twenty seven million in the uh, states. Oh, it sounds like solo. Yeah, but uh, it did make a little bit more um, overseas. It was a huge hit in England, actually, where it made I think fourteen million pounds, which is you know for England, that's pretty good apparently. And I think that might have to do with the soundtrack uh, to the film. Well, yeah, we can't talk about this movie without talking about Queen, which yeah. just again, right? You said the opening sequence where he's where he's manipulating, you know, and you get that drum beat. Doo, 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 doo. I mean, it's just so iconic, and it's just you know to let these this band come in and just have their way with this. I mean, it it would not be the same movie. It would to- it would not totally not be the same. And just the the bizarre synth and just you know, guitar yeah, parts yeah. apart from the the theme song, um, because you've got all those very kind of rudimentary images like a lot of the the cloud work that you see in the movie that's just beautiful that you can tell in a lot of parts is just like you know food coloring probably in being water, yeah. the water yeah. Yeah. but it, it's so effective and with all that weird kind of in search of kind of synthesizer going on be, behind it it's just, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is beautiful. It's, it, it's, it is a product of its time that's for sure. Yeah and it's I, even of its time it was very unique I think. Yeah I um, completely forgot that whole uh, when he goes down to Aboria and they put him in a cage in the swamp with, I love the yeah. lizard people, by the way, those yeah, lizard yeah. people were just, I mean, the sleaze stacks actually were better costumes than these guys, but <laughs> was, they're, I they're don't know. Are they supposed to just have hoods? The face was in their mouth. Like they, right, they, they, they had they open were... mouths with an eye. And, and but I, but I got mouth. the impression that they weren't true lizard people, that they just had like these lizard head mask cowl okay. things and whatnot. Yeah. Cause that almost looked like a hood, but I don't know. Was it supposed to be cheesy looking or yeah. Um, 
I don't and know. But, there's but that yeah, scene the when they're in the court, was, yeah, when they're in the court of Ming, and one of the lizard people is running away, and they're like, yes. that, that the uh, the the ball thing, that, like the fan. I love that thing. That was thing, actually yeah. my second my second favorite character. And you hear it go halt, lizard man halts, and then, right. then it zaps him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Clytus is my is my favorite. I absolutely was enamored, even you know watching it as a kid. Yes. That facial mask and, and you know his jaw, it. Yeah, what's behind his face? Is he like all scarred? Is he like Darth Vader? You know, he was just a cool character. Right. He didn't care. He just did whatever Ming told him to do. And looking at it again, I was convinced that was Jeremy Irons' voice. But I didn't <laughs> his name in the girl. Well, Peter Wingard, I think, was. And I looked him up. Okay. And again, he, you know, big career overseas, but I don't think he's done anything since over here. Mm. Um, so, yeah, Aboria, uh, three years ahead of their time. I think uh, Lucas just borrowed that set for the Ewok Village. Yeah, and for the Star Wars holiday special, because that looked very oh, yeah, similar to some of those shots yep. in, that movie, in, in, in that show, too. Yep. And the oh, whole, uh, let's talk about that scene with the tree stump, because that was probably one of the most visceral scenes that I remember from yeah, the, oh, right, where they from when I first in, saw yep. it. Um, when they all stick their hand in the stump, and there's this scorpion like alien face hugger looking thing yeah, that's inside yeah. the stump that if you put your hand in the wrong stump, that they, it'll, it'll sting you and certain madness and then death. Yeah. But um, it, the the stump all go every single hole in this stump goes to the same the spot. center. <laughs> it just, it's, it's just, it just depends on where this thing is inside <laughs> the stump at any given time. Yeah, right. Yes. it's a convenient plot device. Yeah. And then of course Timothy Dalton rolling his R's like he always does. <laughs> <laughs> really dialogue. But he was great though. He was like such a Robin Hood character, and right. you know it all works. And again, visually, you know everything everything about his people the green. You know the Hawkman. You know, yeah, totally they all have good. like a kind yeah. of color scheme going on. It's like, all right, guys, let's all get together. You guys choose red. We're going to go green. So, but yeah. go back to the Star Wars. There was actually a couple of Star Wars connections in this movie. Oh, well, that's back, fair. Background, fair. Uh, background actors. Well, first of all, uh, at the beginning when, when um, Flash and Dale and uh, Zarkov first show up in Ming's court, um, Princess Aura has like this little minion midget on a chain you see him for like a millisecond uh, i know where you're going with this that, well that was deep roy yes who's not star wars but we do have a kenny baker playing one of the uh r2d2 himself playing one of the dwarves and one of uh clytus is um i don't know they, they have him listed as like clytus observer so i don't know if it's during the zarkov uh interrogation scene where they're all, you know where they're where they're zapping his memory lobot himself John Land, John uh, Hollis. Lobot, really? Lobot's in it. Lobot really? is in there. Yep. I love the Lobot. Yep. I would and like to there's start... a Harry. There's a Harry Potter connection as well. Oh, who? Who? Please. Robbie please. Coltrane. Robbie, who? Who is Robbie Coltrane? In he platform? plays some guy in the airport at the beginning of the movie really? for like a split second. Yeah, he's getting, wow. he gets credit. Guy in airport. <laughs> and Can I guess see? his career started in '79, so this may very well have been his first movie. Credit. Wow, that's impressive. Now, yeah. now, when now with Lobot, let's get back to Lobot. Oh, Lobot. So, right. so let's, let's repeat. Who was he again? Tell he me. was. He was. He had. They have him uh, listed on IMDb as uh, uh, Clytus Observer Number One or Number Two. I can't. I can't. Okay, so, so he's they, one of the guys with the shades and the, that are looking at the screen. I don't know if that's them or there was. So go back to the scene where they have Zarkov uh, on the table and they got the big Doctor No laser beam. Yeah, you know, they're going to wipe his memory. Um, and there's two guys in either corner. And so my guess is it's one of those two guys because I don't know who else would be Clytus Observer. Okay. That, that, okay. So I'm, I'm guessing he may, but I don't think he had any dialogue. I see. This this movie has just gotten that much higher. <laughs> it's from, gone up on your list. Since the Lobot is, Lobot is in there it. There you go. Yeah. I'm, I'm very happy to that. And, yeah. and also, just getting back to Queen really quick, a single was released. It was on the radio all over the place in 1980. For you know the dun 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 and the, so flash uh and then they would they would intersperse dialogue yes single right yep so um general Kala or Gala Kala she oh. is all over the single so like these heard bits of dialogue I know by heart that's what pretty do you funny. mean Flash Gordon oh course. that's right yeah she <laughs> reads read a repulsa from the uh, Power Rangers yeah open fire and then right yeah yeah yeah. And I think there's a Dale, but I think there's also that Dale where she's like, you only got 14 minutes to save the earth or something yeah, like that. Maybe. And looking at Dale, because I was looking at her on online and that sounds very lecherous, but I was just looking at their <laughs> internet uh, movie database um, filmographies. 
and just to see what she's been in. And she was the lead in Manimal on NBC. Oh, on the TV show. On the TV show, yes. That was probably the only other credit of note that she's done, but Manimal. I was very impressed by that. <laughs> Such an obscure note. In I know. I, I have a feeling that Manimal might come back in, in, for, in future episodes of TM. <laughs> you should reboot that. You may mention him again. And he, and he, if you got a superhero that could turn into an animal, that'd be awesome. Yeah, oh, so the one th- I will sidetrack a little bit about superheroes. Okay. So, again, go back to the throne room where uh, all the different factions uh, are offer- giving up their offerings to Ming. And of course, the one okay. king, he's like, ah, we got nothing to give you except my loyalty. And then he, like, you know, tries to kill Ming by throwing the sword at him or whatever. And it's like, Loki tried the same thing with Thanos. Yeah. <laughs> like, watch this movie and be like, that might work. <laughs> and I think that actually happened in Black Panther as well. It's like, oh, let me trick my king into thinking I'm going to give him something and try and stab him. Yeah, it, so it was funny. If he had only gotten a few steps closer, he yeah, might yeah, have he was shot. Nowhere him. Near, <laughs> nowhere near him. So, but there's a couple. I mean, you see a lot of Wizard of Oz kind of references in this. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, especially in the even throne a Rocky movie. Horror yeah. vibe to it. So oh, it, that, it had Riff Raff in it. That's why I wanted to what? point out Riff Raff was in it. He was the guy that um uh, when Timothy Dalton uh, oh the cage, throws the him in the with, yeah he was in the cage with with Flash That's and then he Raff. actually helps him. I got the key. Yeah, that was Riff Raff, huh? That is Riff Raff. Well, I didn't yeah. recognize him without this crackly mm-hmm. hair and yeah. the home. Yeah, no, it was it. It was one of those where I had to freeze frame it. And oh uh, wow, okay. And yeah, it was Don't him. Missed out on that one. It was him. Very cool. This is one an iconic movie for me for you know for for my childhood. So again, I reserve five popcorn buckets for the ultimate of cinema. So you know, I don't give the five easily. So even four is very good in my estimation. So I'm going to give Flash a full four. four. Okay. I, I will follow suit on that. I think this is enjoyable. I, I just don't question. Don't just go with it. It's just a fun, fun movie. Um, you know, they're not taking themselves too seriously. So I don't think you need to either. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you start watching it and you're offended by you know the hot <laughs> right, the aesthetics and the <laughs> button and everything else, or the fact just, that Munson yeah. was somehow unaware that uh, that Zarkov had built a giant spaceship with the intent of actually going up and stopping the invasion, because the minute he's like, "You're coming with me," he's like, "Wait a minute, that thing? Well, no, yeah. he's like, well, what did I hire you for? That, that's, you've been working here. It's a giant spaceship in the middle of my hot house." Or, or when Zarkov, you know, a few minutes later tells Flash and Dale, "Oh yeah, the phone's right in there. Right there. A thing that looks like a rocket ship." Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. No, he was. Uh, he he had and he was able to, uh, you know, sidestep the mind swipe as well. So yes, yeah, very easily. You know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No <laughs> drill was, or anything. Yeah, yeah, there was there was no, at all. There was no segue to him like fighting the mind. You know, it was just like. You thought he was he was gone, and then the next scene, oh, I just thought yeah. of the Beatles. Or, right, or correct. Or, yeah. <laughs> Shakespeare and the Beatles, and that was yeah. enough for me. They can't take that away from me. They, yeah. All righty. So should we step into the confessional now? I think we should step into the confessional. Um, so our confessional question this week is, if you had a superpower, what superpower would you choose? And come on, step down to the mic. I know you've been waiting on this one. What superpower would you choose? I would choose to turn people into this thing. And you've got to, you've <laughs> got to explain it because nobody can see that that's listening. It's the inside of a rubber minion toy. No, oh, no, you want to turn people into an inside of a rubber minion toy? But more general, what what do you, would you call this thing? An animatronic. Yes. An animatronic. Yep. Yeah. So his. What would you do with these animatronics? Idea. Would you control them like um? Yep. Yeah. You'd be the ruler? I would. <laughs> would you be would you be a benevolent and a nice ruler or would you be a bad guy ruler? A good guy ruler. Good, good answer. All right, yes. I th- I've so raised minions, him right. So the minions would be for yeah. good. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, Jeff. Bottom you... my garden and take out the uh, trash. Yeah, his he would have like an army of kind of like sorcerer's apprentice broom kind of. Oh, there you go. Follow him around and you know do good, you know do good. Or, or like uh, you know Sleeping Beauty or uh, Snow White, where you just have the uh, birds do all the uh, birds and the woodland creatures do all the work. Right, right. So you can sit around and drink tea. Um, so if you asked me this, probably as a ten-year-old, I would have said the ability of Nightcrawler, which is to teleport. The Banff. To Banff, to actually to be able to go from location to location all over the world, 
uh, in the blink of an eye. To be able to show up in Key West one second, oh, right. let's go, you know, I want to go to the French Riviera, let's go to Australia. As long as he visually has an image in his head. He can do it. Doesn't, like materialize in rock or inside, right. you know, the ground. Now imagine how much you would save on air travel costs if you were able to do that. If you were yeah. going on vacation, you would just uh, kind of put your arms around your family because he can. Yeah, yes, he could. Up. He could. He could transport other people as well. Yeah. Um, it would make my job a lot easier, too. I could just ban packages to and from um, doorways and leave them. And yeah, you could. Go. Yeah, you, would, you wouldn't even have to leave your house. You just your packages would all be there on your front lawn. Bamf, 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 bamf. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so yeah, so as a 10 year old, that was always the ability I thought was great. But now as a dad and uh, two kids who are completely grown up, my daughter, 18 off to college in the fall, my son, 16, uh, a little more realistic. I would uh, have the ability to slow down time, to actually be able oh. to just step back and not, not the, not the fast forward time, not to go back in time, but just to slow down time to appreciate the moments because it does go way too quick. Right. What, think, a, what a nice Father's Day. Well, it's, mm-hmm. you know, and watching The Incredibles, again, you know, you know, like I said, staying home with my daughter for that first year and a half, you know, and so I saw Bob Parr and just, you know, the, the, his dealings with Jack-Jack. I mean, obviously my kids didn't have superpowers, but they did have the ability to not sleep or to uh, wake up at the most inopportune moments when you're trying to. It just, it goes. It comes and goes, man. And so, yeah, I'm not to get too uh, melancholy or, yeah, but yeah, true. that'd be my ability. Yeah. So, Jim? So, well, how can I follow that? That's, you know, <laughs> anything I say is going to be trivial <laughs> compared to that. So, um, just, just some background on mine. I, I really thought about this. If only just to have one moment that I would just love to, to, to have for my own from, from, a, from a, a cinematic milestone. So, let me set the scene. Uh, just as some background, there's an episode of Black Mirror. Have you ever seen Black Mirror, the anthology I never, show? I, have, I, I know of it. Uh, I have never seen it. Well, there, it's kind of like a Twilighty Zone type thing where it's standalone episodes and they're all based, you know, the, it's kind of a horror sci-fi show. And um, it's all based around some kind of tech that's either real or imagined or, you know, or could happen. So there's this one episode where there's a, a comedian who does the voice of, of a, a bear, a character of a, a plush bear, who does commentary on political race, of, of not, not a presidential race, but I think for prime minister of England. And, um, and the bear becomes so popular that the bear is, is elected. And okay. the corporation that hires the comedian um, kills him off and controls the bear, so controls society eventually through this bear, because people don't want reality, they want the funny bear, you know, sure. as, the, as their leader. So, um, so, so I kind of correlate that to looking at today's corporations like Amazon, that, that seem to be taking over everything, but I, they don't really have a, a, a mascot that, that I can pinpoint. So like, let's say Ronald McDonald, you know, just as, okay. a, as yep. a benign mascot. Right. So say, so say, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, so say if um, Ronald McDonald were to take over the world, or McDonald's would, and, and Ronald would be his figurehead, and um, so you would have to routinely pay pay respects to Ronald if he visits your town. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you would have to come go outside, and he's like going past in his motorcade. And here's where I bring in my the classic cinema milestone, <laughs> okay. just like Superman two, if just like General Zod going to the president of the United States or going to Superman, kneel before Zod. So if Ronald McDonald came up to me and said, kneel before Ronald, and I, and I would, and I would, my superpower would be super strength just so I could crush his hand. <laughs> just like Zod Superman style. does, Zod style. And in, you know, and right to his face, do the Superman music. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. And, like, what, what, what are you what are you doing and as i crush his hand, what you're doing yeah, as i like, crush I his hand it. like i would listen to him like screech like zod did like Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was a little over time. and then hopefully there would be some precipice like nearby that i could lift him up just lift him up and, and, him over. and toss him over the precipice and that's that's why i would want super strength just for that moment <laughs> <laughs> That's a long way to go for that. It is. It is. Uh, it sounded much that. better in my head than after. Yeah, that's funny. That's great. I'll take it. Yeah. Listen. So there we go. <laughs> thank you. Thanks to Harrison for being a guest. Yes. On thank the you, show Harrison. Today.
yeah. who's now in a um, panda costume. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, if only this was a video, <laughs> you'd be rocking it. We should take a picture and post it on the, our Facebook. Yeah, I will. I will. Guest host. It, it, with a WC Fields that said, uh, children should be seen and not heard. There you go. Yeah, 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 ah, yeah. Not proved him true. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, thank you. Hats Happy off Father's to you on Day. this Father's Day. Yes, yep, yeah. you as well. Even though so, I don't have we a hat. never got anything. So, Dave should be supplying us with our next classic feature. We haven't gotten that from him yet, so we can't really announce it at this point. But keep an eye on our Facebook if you're listening to this and you care to follow along with us. So, if you want to watch the classic feature, we're, we're, we'll announce it on our Facebook page. And I do believe we will be reviewing Jurassic Jurassic World. What is the name of it? Is it Jurassic Fallen World? Fallen Kingdom. Fallen Kingdom. Yes, Fallen that's Kingdom. next weekend. And we are going to make every effort to see that and review it for you next week. Yes. My son, my son is thrilled. Ben's like, you know, we, we rushed to the movies now to, to catch these in the, within yes. the two days before we, and he's like, I love this podcast because yeah. <laughs> we're forced to watch these yeah, movies. We're seeing every movie. Yeah. Yeah. I, Which I, I mean, listen, I, I love going to the movies and, and you know, that's half the reason we're doing this anyways, but you know, sometimes it may take me a week to actually get to the theater to see it. But now it's like, all right, I got to go now. And we got to go. I got to yeah, yeah, carve yeah. out that two hour window and we just got to make it happen. Exactly. Exactly. So, and, um, so, so yeah, Jurassic um, Fallen Kingdom will be out next weekend. Ant-Man two weeks from now. So look forward to that episode. That's, so we'll have uh, a window in between. Then. And we're going to have to re- completely redo our rankings after, after Ant-Man and Wasp. Oh, the Marvel rankings. Yeah. Or at least put them in there somewhere. Yeah. And Mike had the idea, and I love this, of perhaps doing an X-Men film ranking. It's so, so the Fox, the, the whole, of yeah, X-Men. The fun, yeah, including Deadpool and, you know, okay. and the standalone Wolverine movies as well. And I guess it would also, maybe we could do that in tandem with this new Mutants movie that's coming out. When is that coming out? Like, I remember uh, seeing a trailer for it, but... I have a feeling maybe fall or late summer. Uh, I, I'll have to go look. It could even be 2019. So we might not wait mm-hmm. that. We might not want to gotcha. wait that. Just the, the fact that they're pulling this off and making it much more of a horror right. is interesting. Yes. An interesting uh, move. Yes. So, cool. all right. Yeah, I think right. the, uh, the, the, the film is about to run out of its spindle. So We're, we're nice and tight this week. Yeah. So so we didn't bloviate like we did last Yeah, I know. We were close, but yeah, we, we kept it under an hour this week. Okay, good. All right. All right, so, man. We'll enjoy. Adios. Thanks for listening, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Bye-bye.